Stella Artois unfiltered. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. I have managed to track down a can of the elusive Belgian, well, it says Belgian on it. I'll get onto that in a minute. Uh, it's, uh, it's the Stella Artois Unfiltered. Now, anybody who is a beer reviewer on YouTube has reviewed this beer. I'm late to the party. I don't have an Asda near me, and it was rolled out exclusively to Asda in February, and it is now May, and this was rolled out in April to all the other supermarkets. I don't know why they had an exclusive deal with Asda to, to roll it out, but there you go, that was the case. And I was mooching about today in Morrison's, and do you know what I was looking for? I was looking for a nice pack of sausages because I've got a bottle of Budvar in the fridge, now I bought two, and one of them was massively skunked. It, it ended up going down the sink. And a good tip: if you if you buy a beer that you don't like, or you buy a bottle of skunked beer in a green bottle or a, a clear bottle, don't throw it away. You can, if you're if you've got some sausages in the fridge and you're doing sausages for dinner, boil them, boil your your sausages for about four or five minutes in the beer take them out, let them rest, pat them down with a, a kitchen towel or something like that, and then fry them. It, it gives nice flavours to the sausages, regardless of the taste of the beer. I think the, a lot of stuff gets broken down when it boils, and then flavours are imparted into the sausages, and then when you refry them, or even barbecue them as well, they're already cooked on the inside where you've boiled them, so basically you're just giving them a crispy coating, and they taste absolutely great. So. Chuck your bad beer away unless you're cooking sausages. Boil them up for about four or five minutes in them, even steam them if you want, and then fry them, and they'll taste great, trust me. Anyway, more on that later. Uh, yeah, so I got quite a few requests from subscribers and viewers saying, can you review it? And to be honest, I've got a load of German beer in the fridge, and I'm plowing my way through that. It's a tough job, isn't it? And uh, I sort of, I didn't give this lot a swerve, but I, I didn't go out of my way to find it, and it wasn't very common in the supermarkets that I went in. I didn't, I didn't see it, to be honest. But as I say, I was mentioning back today, Morrison's, they had a six pack of 330ml cans, and that cost me £6.35. So I had to buy six cans, so there you go. Which I think is, what, a pound a can for a 330ml? That's a little, well, no, it's not, what am I talking about? It's, uh, it's yeah, it works out to about, I don't know, pound five or something like that, six, five, 30, yeah, yeah it's about pound five or pound six P a can, which, given it's three, three mil, depending on the beer, whether it's nice, there's a few alarm bells, I'll get onto that in the ingredients, but what this is, it's basically an unfiltered beer. Now, nothing new there. If you believe the bullshit that the marketing people and the head of Budweiser Brewing come out with, you'd think this was fucking rocket science that they just come up with, or they just split the atom and this was revolutionary. Everyone's at it now. ABM Bev are at it with uh, Bex. They don't, they've done an unfiltered Bex. I reviewed that on the channel. Didn't think much of it at all. This is supposedly good stuff. Again, it's ABM Bev, but still is one of them lagers, which it, it, it just doesn't taste good over here, in my opinion especially in them green bottles. In the cans, uh, there's better out there. And this used to be a favorite of mine years ago. And I do mean years ago, I'm talking sort of 80s now. And the Taylor Walker pubs, you had two choices. You had Heineken, which was the, I think it was 3.6% or something like that, which was the sort of session lager. And you had this stuff, which was 55 
and this had a reputation. Let me just read you out with the head of the Budweiser Brewing off sales. Now, Budweiser Brewing are like a subsidiary of AB InBev, and that includes Budweiser, Corona, um, Stella Artois, and it, it just reads off like a, a rogues gallery of terrible beer. But I will uh, I'll give you the um, the spiel on it. it. It's just absolute fucking bullshit. So Mark Wingfield Digby, he's the off tr off trade sales director. Says so in marketing, you know my views on marketing. Bet you Peruvian punch you. And this is what he said: with an un with unfiltered lager taking Europe by storm. Is it? And hazy beer becoming hugely popular in the craft segment. We are looking forward to bringing something new to the world lager category. Something new. Has he never heard of Keller beer? Has he never heard of the numerous Belgian beers that have unf are unfiltered? It's nothing new. This was the way beer was brewed years ago. Filtering is relatively new in the history of brewing. But anyway, I'm digressing. Stella Artois. Unfiltered provides retailers with an innovative product and super premium, fully recyclable paperboard packaging. That's not bad. I don't know what the, the innovative product and super premium, fully recyclable. Yeah, I get the, the recyclable shit, but an innovative product, okay. Stella Artois is the ideal brand to grow the unfiltered category in the UK with the lager becoming synonymous with taste and quality. Are you fucking on some sort of drugs or what? We are thrilled to be launching Stella Artois unfiltered to the UK market and are confident it will prove success up and down the country. Okay, that's what they're saying about it. Personally, I haven't tasted it. I take issue with a couple of things where he's saying basically unfiltered lager is a new thing. It's not. If you know your beer, it's not. Unfiltered beer is not a new thing. That's the way it was. Originally, you would get cloudy beer, certainly in Germany. All lager was cloudy. Even ales were cloudy as well. It was only because you'd get some nasties in there and, and God knows what else. And they started filtering it so you could see exactly what was in the beer. But there's an argument around that filtered beer, um, you, you, you filter out a lot of the flavor. Well, when you filter out the yeast, uh, it depends on the yeast, obviously, because Belgian beer is dependent on the yeast. The yeast is a big thing and you do get lots of yeasty esters from Belgian beers and you do see segments of yeast in Belgian beer. Certainly at the bottom you get residue. Wheat beer of course is unfiltered. So all this about unfiltered beer, it's a, it's a new craze. It's not mate, it's, it's fucking not. But again he's in marketing. They might try and make you believe what, what they want you to believe. But you ain't fooling me. Anyway, I've been slagging this off and I haven't had a drop past my lips. So let's get it open and let's see what's going on. Now if this is good, I will tell you it's good, all right? Uh, I was just about to open it, but I won't. I want to run the, through the ingredients with you, right? So on the side of the can, the ingredients are water, barley malt, maize, hops, yeast, and in the brackets, extract. So. One of the first, I wouldn't say one of the first, but one of the few companies who actually list yeast as the ingredient. And the only reason they're doing that is because it's unfiltered. Now, yeast you find in every beer. If you don't put yeast in beer, you're just making a, a non-alcoholic drink. The yeast are what produces the alcohol. Yeast are live organisms and they feed on the sugars in, from, from malts and, and other sugars that are put in there. So if, if you have a brewing sugar, the reason they say it's a brewing sugar or an invert sugar is because it's fermentable. Why is it fermentable? Because the yeast will eat on the sugar, they will piss out and puke up alcohol. And the alcohol is what you drink and I drink as well. Don't let that put you off though. <laughs> Stick with me kids, you'll go far. Toilet and back. Anyway, uh, 330 more can, 5%. And there is, I'm sure you've seen this before. I'm glad this isn't in a, gr <coughs> a green bottle because I'm hoping to get the true flavor of the beer. So without further ado, let's get it open and see what's going on. Oh, 
Right, as I say, I tried the unfiltered Bex. I didn't think much of it, to be honest. And I think if you're gonna have a dodgy product to start off with, and you just leave some yeasty floaters in it, yeah, you're doing an exercise in turd polishing. That is my view. Now, foolishly, I've put this in a small 330 mil glass and I'm not going to get it all in there so I'm doing that I'm putting it in a pint glass which is filthy you fucking prat oh dear dear oh fucking dear give it a shake see if there's any of that this glass is really really dirty so if the head dissipates I can't really knock marks off for that so I'm just going to ignore that please ignore the bubbles at the side of the glass yeah it, I know it's disgusting there it is in the glass um, there's just a, a mild haze to it. I mean, is this what they're really kicking off about? Jesus. Roma. Actually doesn't smell too bad. I will say that. Very floral and hoppy. Almost noble hop-like. Wow, that does surprise me. If somebody told me that was Stella, I would not believe that. Mmm. Interesting. I have to say, it doesn't, it doesn't, the aroma's not that bad. Hmm, what have we got here? Yeah, so that's died down a little bit now, along with the head. And it, it's very grassy, it's almost like a, a sarts hop type aroma, like a Czech pale lager even. Hmm, not really getting the maze that's in there. Interesting. Okay, let's get it down the hatch. Bottoms up. Not the worst beer in the world, I have to say. Wow, AB InBev getting something right. I feel like a bit of a fool now after slagging them off, after all that lot. Hmm. Pleasantly hoppy. You can tell that it's not really loose leaf hops they've put in here it's bound to be extract if it's brewed on that much of a scale and they've even got <coughs> they've even got a yeast extract in here so again when you're brewing on this bigger scale you get you get massive discounts on the ingredients and the ingredients aren't the best quality but i have to say all things considered there's a bloody hair in the fucking glass where does that come from i don't know jesus christ um, it doesn't look too appealing. That's partly my fault because of the dirty glass. But it ain't bad. That doesn't look too appealing, but again, I'm not going to knock that. There's another bloody hair in it. Where the fuck is all this hair coming from? Jesus. Please tell me it didn't come out of the can. No. Um, I'm not going to knock marks off for that because that's partly my fault. This glass was dirty. And fucking dishwasher tablets again. That's really annoying me, that is. I mustn't have used that since I got rid of them little dishwasher tabs. Let me give you a quick rundown on the flavour. So there's a sweetness to it. Slight malty, grainy sweetness to it. There is a little hint of that hoppy aroma that I got. I mean, that, that was really nice aroma considering that this is Stella um, and it's just a a pretty I wouldn't say nondescript but it's a, a slightly better than mediocre macro brewed beer that's that's my take on it no nasties 
slight sweet again i'm going to say there's a slight sweetness to it that does taste a little bit artificial but that's minimal and i have to say it isn't the worst beer in the world in fact it's leaps and bounds ahead of Stella Artois in the in the bottles, the filtered type. Now, I'm not going to sing its praises and say it's the next best thing to, since sliced bread, but I do think it is a slightly better beer from ABM Viv. Now, I did try a while back. I mean, I did I say I did try it. I used to drink loads of it when I went over to Belgium because it because when we were doing gigs over there, we used to get it for free. Uh, the Jupiler beer. And to be honest, for what it is, that wasn't a bad beer either. And that was AB InBev too. And again, that's a macro brewed beer. It's brewed on a huge scale. They actually sponsor, Jupiler actually sponsor the Belgian uh, first division football. And it, it, it's that sort of beer, if you know what I mean. It, it's one that's widely known in Belgium. I think it's the most popular beer and I think Stella might be second I'm not sure I know it's big in the region of Flanders and the Flemish speaking part of Belgium I think Stella Artois is more prevalent in the Walloon part certainly in places like Liège and around the Ardennes and stuff like that you you rarely saw Jupiler there but getting back to this stuff um, not the worst beer in the world I have to say and I have seen and tasted lagers from craft brewers that have looked pretty similar to that and not been as good and for a 330ml can they've charged almost double that now, I know Stella is brewed by a macro brewer I shouldn't really be comparing it to craft brewers because craft brewers have huge overheads they don't get the big discounts on ingredients and they have big logistical costs as well so they do have to charge a little bit extra but i don't really like to be seeing supporting macro brewers but in these times when money isn't as forthcoming as other times and there's other priorities as well such as the fuel bills and stuff like that and you know none of us are rich i mean well there may be some that are viewing this but i certainly ain't rich and a lot of it for me does come down to cost it's why i don't review craft beers well that's one of the reasons the cost but it's also the reason why i don't review some of these really expensive belgian lambics that go for like 12 and 13 pounds a bottle i don't think that's right that someone like me should be reviewing that recommending it to people who may be watching that don't have as much money because i mean i i don't have that much money either i mean i'm, I'm not pleading poverty i'm not saying i'm on the bread line or nothing like that but i haven't got masses of disposable income and i don't think many people have in these in this day and age you know we've all got bills to pay this is a luxury to be honest beer and i i try to review beers that are not too expensive if you know what i mean i mean yeah admittedly there are some on the channel that are sort of four and a half quid a bottle if you buy them online but that's as far as i'll go i won't be reviewing these really super expensive Belgian Lambics as I say which go for like 20 quid and even the really expensive uh, quadruples and stuff that you get from Belgium and there's even some of the German stuff as well that's expensive and these barrel aged fucking bullshits that I think is a bit of a con to be honest but there you go where was I going with this yeah but generally on the whole that is not a bad beer So what is the verdict on Stella Artois unfiltered? Well, well you saw what happened, didn't you? I was quite ready to say this is a pile of shit. This is the tyranny of macro brewers and the gimmicks, that the marketing bullshit. I still think that's a load of bollocks, what he, what he wrote. But that is not a bad beer. I will say that. I think if you're new to the craft beer market, and well you're obviously not if you're looking at this but i think if you want to dip your toe into a little bit more of an exotic style of beer this is a, a reasonably good stepping stone it's cheap it isn't the worst beer in the world i believe there are 
bitter beers out there. I'll give you an example. The the Budvar. When I when I bought this, I bought six cans of it, and it was six pound thirty five, or three for fifteen quid in Morrison's. They've done exactly the same deal on Budvar, three for fifteen quid. I can't remember what it was. I think it might have been the same price actually, six pound thirty five. But if it's a toss up between Budvar and this, I'm going to go for Budvar all day long. So I want to put that into perspective now. This isn't the new fridge filler for me by any means. I, I still think Budvar is one of the best ones out there. And I'm not saying that because it's still an independently run or state run brewery from the Czech Republic. It's a good beer. If you get it in the cans, don't get it in the bottles because you'll end up doing your sausages in them. And again, don't forget that, that's a good tip. If you, if you try it, you can do it with any beer. Dark beers, light beers, um, don't do it in with good beers though so if you're going to use like old peculiar and all that don't i, I see you walk into pubs and they use uh they do old, old peculiar uh steak and ale pies and stuff like that and i think fuck me why are you doing that but that's just me anyway uh this ain't bad if you haven't tried it yet i suggest you do but get it in a can i think if i'd have got this in a bowl this could have been a completely different review and personally, I think if you're going to try a beer that is normally sold in a green bottle, but they do it in cans, get the cans first, because that will be what the beer really tastes like. Then go back to your green bottles and do the, and, and see the difference. In fact, I should really do a comparison video. But is it worth it comparing beer from the same brewery from a, from a, from a can and a, and a bottle. Um, I don't know, maybe one day. Maybe one day when I'm going to have a rant. <laughs> but I'm going to give that. All things considered, price, origins, ingredients, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Now, the reason I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10 is because it exceeded my expectations. I was quite prepared to go into rant, as I said, and give it at best, at very best, 5%. But, having tasted it, it, it isn't the worst beer in the world. There, there are no nasties in that that I can detect. <laughs> Caveat, of course, is if this was in a bottle, the review might have been different. And to be fair, the Bex that I reviewed was in a bottle. And that's why it got lambasted. So, there you go. But yeah, I yeah I think that's a worthy seven out of ten. Uh, you've probably all tried it before. A lot of people have been messaging me and subscribers have been messaging me saying to review it. There's my review. Verdict: not bad. Still better out there, but it ain't the worst beer in the world. And remember, beer is working class champagne.